places in India are at once so traveller friendly and yet so enchanting and hassle free as Mountain Frame Lake. The town is dotted with stupas and crumbling mud brick houses. Here, gushing streams and narrow footpaths link traditionally style Ladakhi homes and hotels with flat roofs, sturdy walls and ornate wooden window frames. My unforgettable journey to Leh started on Jan 25, 2016 from Chennai Airport. We were a group of 10 members who reached Delhi, stayed overnight and continued our sojourn towards Leh the next morning via flight. From a temperature of 30 degrees, we were moving towards minus 20 degrees. Travelling during winter can be just fun as enjoyable as a warm weather trip. Just that it requires a little extra preparation. I was well prepared. One week before the trip, I went to the Decathlon to purchase stuffs for my entire trip. You must have heard people saying, when it is cold, you need to dress in layers. This helps one to regulate our body temperature. I wore 5 layers and I felt very warm. Sometimes I used to feel too hot after wearing so many layers, but still it was comfortable. Lay is a place that's too easy to fall in love with, but we have to take things easy on arrival. The altitude here means that most visitors initially suffer mild headache and breathlessness. To prevent this becoming full-blown acute mountain sickness, drink plenty of fluid and avoid strenuous exertion at first. Our team consisted of 10 members along with Mr. Rahul, the trip organizer and the team leader, Mr. Nobu, the guide and a few cooks and helpers. The entire trip was planned by the Ramanans, Brenda Auntie and Ramanan uncle from Trichy, who have been passionate travellers to the Himalayas for the past 35 years. Organizing such an educational and fun-filled trip requires a lot of experience. Every aspect of the trip was planned flawlessly. Day 1 of our trip in Leh, that is on Jan 26, was a day of relaxation. We were allowed to get acclimatized to the temperature outside. It was only from the day 2, that is 27th of Jan, that we started with our travel experience. We had a proper schedule lined up for each day. Morning were reserved for trekking, visiting monasteries, lakes and villages. Every evening we got together around the Bukhari sharing our stories and experience. Let me take you through this memorable journey of mine. Now I am going to share with you my treasured experiences of all the places I got to visit in this trip. Leh is a place which is dominated by the monasteries. We were taken to the Hemis and the Tixi Monastery. Hemis Monastery is a Tibetan Buddhist monastery of the Drukpa lineage, located in Hemis, Ladakh, India. It is situated 45 kilometers from Leh. The annual Hemis festival honoring Padma Sambhava is held here in early June. Tikse Monastery is the largest monastery in central Ladakh district in Jammu and Kashmir. It is situated 18 kilometers from Leh in the Indus Valley. There is one big statue of Maitreya, the future Buddha, which covers almost two floors of the monastery, nearly 40 feet in height. Maitreya is a bodhisattva who will appear on earth in the future, achieve complete enlightenment and teach the pure dharma. The main objective of this trip was to observe and study some of the tribes and villages which are situated around this area. It was a unique experience for all of us to stay with the villagers for nearly four to five days. We had the fabulous experience of watching their day-to-day -day life from a very close quarters. We learned about their culture, food, dressing, music and how they earn their livelihood etc. I had the opportunity of visiting 5 villages out of which I had found 2 villages very fascinating. They are the Garkun and the Darchik. 
which are huddled in the lower territory of the Hanu Valley. Brokpas and the Brokpas are the red Aryans living here. There is a theory which says that these people are the descendants of Alexander the Great. Ladakhi's traditional music includes the instruments like surna and daman, that is, shanai and drum. Tibetan music is an integral part of the religion. It involves compel religious chanting. Religious masked dances are also an important part of Ladakh's cultural life. All the major Ladakhi monasteries hold an annual masked dance festival. The typical costumes of the locals include gonches of velvet, boots, hats and elaborately embroidered waistcoats. Their main source of income is agriculture. During summers, they grow large quantities of apricots, apples, grapes and they store it for later use in winter. Their staple food is sampa and namkin cha. Sampa is a useful trekking food as it can be consumed without cooking. Frankly speaking, I could not sour the taste of tukpa noodle soup and sampa roasted barley flour. The most exciting part of our trip was the wildlife trekking. Ladakh is famous for its rich wildlife. The animals which we spotted were wild yak, Asiatic ibex, Ladakh uriad, red fox, Tibetan wolf and the snow leopard. The birds which we could spot were black red start, common rose finch, black billed magpie, golden eagle and lamagal. Beginning of any trek usually was boring as we used to be on foot for a long time with no fruitful results. The tiredness vanished as soon as we spotted a bird or an animal. Our energy level reached the peak and we were back on our jobs of clicking photos and observing our find with the binoculars. Our excitement knew no bounds that moment. Every aspect of the trip was exciting and thrilling be it the food or attending to the nature's call. The food was planned, packed and given to the members. The packet usually consisted of a boiled egg, boiled potato, omelette stuffed inside chapati or puri and cream biscuits. If you notice, most of them are energy providers. Toilets there are known as chaksa. It is a small room in which there is a small hole dug in the middle. The waste is collected and later used as fire and fertilizer. Something mysterious happens in one place which is 30 kilometers away from lake at an elevation of around 14,000 feet above sea level. Magnetic Hill is a place where the layout of the surrounding land produces the optical illusion that a very slight downhill slope appears to be an uphill slope. Thus, a car left out of gear will appear to be rolling uphill. My overall observation is people there smile at you every time you see them and the first word which comes out of their mouth is Julie, a common word used for greeting people. The trademark of Ladakhi to me is his or her humility. I believe this high regards to humility has prevented the society from many social vices like caste system, materialistic competition or class system. When I watch a Ladakhi woman stout and confident in their traditional dresses, salma, tied tight to their waist, their hair plaited by hips, I know for sure that the posterity is in hands of compassionate yet dexterous mothers. They exude conviction in their action, frankness in expression and empowerment in gait. Last but not the least, one thing that tied all about into a rosary is silence. If silence were a tangible commodity, Ladakh would have been its largest exporter. The vast expanses of mountains and plains enable the silence to prevail. When the winters usher in snow to the valleys, serenity peaks to touch deepest of senses. The immovable mountains affect the people to be still for a moment. Living at an altitude of 3,505 meters 
for a couple of days and all the experiences have truly humbled me. The humility and the involuntary expressive smiles of these simpletons teach us many lessons. These people have mastered the art of living in the true sense. I have also learned the biggest lesson, smile, even when you are at your all-time low. Now I am back, enriched with all treasured moments and a deep sense of satisfaction of having spotted the very rare snow leopard. Oh, 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 oh,